We are live. Hello. Hey, hey. Hello, hello, everyone. How's everybody doing? Um, this is the part where I figure out how to get everything to work. <laughs> <laughs> well, funny, ironic considering today's topic. Well, listen, guys, um, today we are going to be talking about how to get focused, stay focused, and regain lost focus. I don't think there'd be much dispute uh, when I say that as entrepreneurs, one of the hardest things, at least that I've found, uh, maybe I'm wrong, is is getting focused. Just getting focused. After that, probably the second hardest thing is is actually staying focused. You know, you're in the zone, and uh, and actually getting or getting focused and staying focused. And then third is is regaining your focus after you know constant interruptions and distractions, which are just kind of the norm this year. Uh, I was talking with one of our team members recently. We were talking about how, like, you know, staying focused under normal circumstances is difficult, right? Uh, but coming out of a, a two-year pandemic where where virtually nothing was normal, it's next to impossible to to get focused and stay focused. But there's a path out of that that fog. You know, I feel like we just kind of been in a fog for a couple of years. And uh, today's live lesson, what I want to show you is how to get focused and how to stay that way. So here's what someone told me recently. Uh, I thought this was kind of uh, interesting. They said, some weeks I'm pumped, focused, energetic, and productive. Life is good and I'm mowing down my goals one by one. Then I have a week where it feels like I get nothing done. I have no energy or focus. What do I do? Probably sounds familiar, right? Well, it doesn't have to be that way, okay? Distractions, depressions, uh, just, you know, what the heck is going on? You know, why can I not focus on it? That's a normal part of a productive person's life, especially when you're an entrepreneur. Uh, you know, what was it? Uh, the song by Tripp and Tyler, you know, hardly working from home. And, and they say, you try getting some, you try getting something done when you can do anything. You know, there's nobody telling me I have to do anything. I don't even have to show up today for this if I don't want to. You know, I'm not going to get mm -hmm. fired. My business is still going to be there tomorrow. Uh, you guys might be mad, but it's still going to be here. You're the one who's solely responsible for keeping your eye on your destination. And so today I'm going to show you how to get focused, stay focused, and regain focus. Uh, I want to welcome everybody who is live. Um, make sure you drop a line in the chat and say hey to us. Let us know where you are joining from. And Alan, welcome again, my friend. Welcome. Yeah, you're going to get a lot of amens today. A lot of amens on the on the... <laughs> In the comments, I bet. So one for me too. So nice. yeah, I've been looking forward to this topic. This is awesome. Well, that's cool. I'm yeah. yeah, I mean, like you said it, I think, last week, you know, just being on on these helps you kind of have to be here. Uh, oh, it's forced learning. I love it. It's yeah. forced learning. It's absolutely a, a, a great. <laughs> it really is. So we got Gina and Janine, some genes on and then Angie. Um cool. What, Angie, why do you always have to put hi from sunny, warm, beautiful Amelia Island? Um, yeah, always having to rub that in. Luke from not so warm or I don't know about sunny, but uh, Belgium, I presume, is probably not as warm as, as Amelia Island right now. Um, nice today. Yeah. Well, anyway, good to see you guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, so listen, if you know anybody who struggles with this, focus, right? Mm -hmm. uh, whether it's getting focused, staying focused, regaining focus, uh, they would benefit from hearing this message. Hey, do them a favor, hit that share button. Uh, get them on here in the next couple of minutes. Share it mm -hmm. with them, you know, text them, post it to your wall, whatever, share it with your friends uh, and, uh, and get them on this today because I think this is really going to help them. Uh, yeah, sunny today in Missouri. I heard, yeah, my, my friend Matthew Loomis is in Missouri and he said it was like 70 something yesterday. So it'll be 70 this, uh, this weekend. So I'm excited about that here. I haven't seen 70 since we were in Florida. Um, yeah. no, it was, um, it's, it, it's been, it's been nice lately, but we've yeah, had some cool weather here too. We have, yeah, it's we, been beautiful it, here, uh, mid fifties, you know, and then it, today it dropped tomorrow. It's like mid forties and then boom. 70 this weekend. So looking forward to that. Um, I feel bad. This is that time of year where I really struggle because it's like, I look at the forecast for the next day and it's like, Oh, it's going to be nice. Uh, I need to cancel all of my calls or move all of my meetings to like first thing in the morning. 
Or if I have any Zoom calls and they don't have to be Zoom calls, I'm like, get me outside. I yeah. need to, I need to go outside. Cause like, if I'm only going to get, you know, if we're only going to have like four hours of good weather in the next week, I want to be outside for all four hours. Mm -hmm. uh, again, that's one of the beauties of entrepreneurship, right? Is I can do that. Yep. Now the downside to entrepreneurship is, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, there's a million things I could be doing. And sometimes it's hard to, to get focused. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about getting mm -hmm. focused, how to get focus. You know, I, I, growing up, I've mentioned this many times, I've played competitive golf and I always knew about the importance of what's called a pre-shot routine. Okay. So this is, you know, the 20 to 30 seconds before you actually hit the ball or hit the putt. Right. But I'd never worked on it. It wasn't until college, actually. Um, I got to college and uh, I, I made it something that truly set me up to focus on the shot. Right. I had a sports psychologist named P Pete Giacabi, uh, just, I never forget when he called one of the guys on the team and left a message, Pete Giacabi and his, his girlfriend, uh, left a message for his roommate. And it said, peach cobbler called, <laughs> wants you to call him back. I'm like, <laughs> I don't think they got married. You um, went to school in the South. That's for sure. I went university of Tennessee, you know, I know. So, um, you can tell by the messages. Never said I went there for an education, <laughs> but, um, so I started working with a sports psychologist to really help me in this area. We, we got this routine down probably until, until I quit playing due to injury, this routine never varied. I mean, I can still remember it to this day. I would stand behind the, the ball and have the club here, you know, holding like that. I would put my glove on, got my glove on. I already had my glove on, but then what I would do is I would undo the Velcro and tighten it back. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you think about Velcro, right? <laughs> That was what I call a focus trigger, that sound of that Velcro. And then I would visualize the shot. You know, I would see it clearly in my mind. I'm looking, okay, here's my ball. I want to see it doing exactly what I want it to do. And then I walked up to the ball with the club in my right hand, aligned myself, took one last look at the target and swung, right? But th that focus trigger to this day, it, it is, it, it's, it's, it's crazy. The sound of Velcro does something to me almost like uh, uh, almost like robotic if you ever seen the movie uh the manchurian candidate um i, I think uh the the i don't know i never seen the original version which i think had frank sinatra mm -hmm. but the version with denzel washington and lee lee leave schreiber and meryl streep i mm -hmm. think um the guy who kind of looks like dick cheney is in there and then there's this other guy i can't remember who's in it but you know they would call up and and and, and their the voice would say like you know is this sergeant you know, they, they would like Sergeant and then their last name. And then it was like, and then they would say Sergeant, first name and last name, Sergeant, first name, middle name, last name. And instantly you, like they would change, they would shift. And that's what happened to me with that sound of Velcro. It's like, I got to focus. I got to focus. Right. And, and I, if, if I hear the sound of Velcro, even today, I start picturing myself going through that routine. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, if I got distracted at any point, like if I, if I was walking up to ball, I've already gone through it. I'm walking up to ball and then a bee comes by. Well, that broke my routine. I would back away, snap the Velcro again, and then I would continue. If my focus was broken, I needed the trigger to refocus. And that, that's what we want to talk about. It's like, if you're going to get focused, you've got to be something that triggers it. You, can't, you don't just fall into focus most of the time. So today, the trigger for me, my focus trigger is the sound of very specific music that I play to get me in the state of, of flow. There's actually only three things that I listen to when I write um, there's a, uh, when I write or do any type of like focus work, right? If I have to focus anything for more than a few seconds and I need to get into a state of flow for 45 minutes to an hour and a half. Like when I was writing my book, turn your passions into profit, I was writing 45 minutes to 90 minutes every morning for months. There was a, I played the exact same song every single time. Uh, you can Google it. Uh, in fact, I'm going to just Google it with you. Uh, it's the, it's so by the by the band uh, the XX intro. If you Google XX intro, so literally XX intro ten hours, you'll find a YouTube video. Maybe maybe Alan can drop that in the chat. Mm -hmm. It's a YouTube video that's a ten hour loop of like a two minute song that's basically the same beat just over and over and over and over and over and over. When I'm doing other focus works, that was my writing focus. So to this day, if I need to do creative work. 
that's the song I play. When I go into monk mode writing or any type of creation, that's the song I play. Um, I have a, a song on Spotify that is, um, let me find it here real quick. It is, it's an alpha, what is it? Alpha or something like that. Not Aloha. Uh, alpha Waves Focus. Uh, you guys can, I don't know if you guys can hear this, but it's literally just that. It's two and a half minutes. I'll put it on a loop and I'll play it for hours and I won't come out of focus. When I hear that, when I hear that song by the XX, when I hear that song, those are my triggers. And then my other one, when I'm doing focus work that involves things that quite frankly, bore me to tears, like spreadsheets. Um, you know, I gotta, I gotta like look through, I'm doing like some affiliate work, stuff like that. Um, then I allow myself to hear words, you know, that and I'm not, I don't have to like be totally zoned in so I can have kind of something, but I will literally play, um, the same song over and over and over again by about the third playing I'm in just like total zone mode. Don't even hear the words. Hmm. Um, and I'll change that song up periodically. I've been on the same song for about six months now. Um, but it's, you know, I just, I have them on my playlist and I play them. And so the key is to find your focus trigger, right? Th this is, it might take some time. You know, when I was in college, I, I tried probably 10 things before we landed on the Velcro. For me, what I've, what we discovered with my sports psychologist is I'm more auditory than I am physical. So this, the cool thing about the Velcro is I never noticed it, but even today, if you, if I'm not looking at the camera, if when I do it, if I don't play golf anymore, but if I did, I would look. So now what am I doing when I'm looking, peeling and refastening, I'm engaging pretty much all of my senses. I'm visually doing it. I'm hearing the sound. I'm physically touching it. You know, I mean, I didn't probably didn't smell the glove, but basically I'm engaging most of my senses there. Right. And you want to find something that's probably like that. For me, the playing of the song is physical. I'm clicking a play button. You think, oh, that's so simple. Yeah. But when I click the play button, I, even before the song really even starts, I'm in focus mode. Mm -hmm. And then I'm hearing it. And to a certain extent, I'm seeing it because I'm clicking, you know, I'm having to see where the mouse is going to click it. Same thing as if I'm playing it on there, I'm, I'm doing those things. And so the idea here is, is to find what works for you. And that's how we landed on that, <coughs> that because I tried some other things that we'll talk about as we go along that might work for you, but that didn't work for me because they weren't engaging that sound. So number one is find a common, but not too common sound. I don't typically hear Velcro, um, peeling throughout the day, even on the golf course, it's pretty common. I might do it. You know, I mean, I hit 30, five, you know, 36, 37, you know, full shots in a round, hopefully not more than 37. Um, you know, I've played a bad round if I hit more than 37, uh, but you know, 32 to 37 of those in a round. Uh, so I hear it some, but it's not a common sound. You know, it's not like, you know, some sort of, uh, I'm uh, just a common sound, right? So mm -hmm. is there, is there an uncommon sound that song as much as I play it, Outside of the circumstance in which I play it, I have never played that song anywhere other than my computer. I don't do creative work anywhere other than my computer. So it's a pretty unusual sound. I don't listen to that song. I've never once listened to that song when I'm working out. I don't, maybe I should try that actually. Um, I don't listen to that sound when I'm running. I don't listen to that sound when I'm doing the dishes. I don't listen to that sound when I make, you know, that song when I'm doing dinner. It's this one sound. And so I, it's an uncommon sound, but it's a common sound in that it's not something that's too hard to find. So I don't know. It might be, uh, it might even be like as simple as like closing a drawer. Uh, I, I didn't catch this until the other day, but one of my focus triggers that's sort of become a thing is opening and closing the drawer under my, I have my, my monitor sit on um, basically what amount to small file cabinets. And I only open and close that drawer before a coaching call. It's the only reason why I would ever need to get into that side. My Some of my stuff's over here, but on the right side is my journals, my coaching journals for our coaching clients. I only open and close that door before, or that drawer at the very beginning of a coaching call. And it's kind of a subliminal like coaching call time, right? 
Um, you may have to work through some, you know, different sounds. I don't know. It took a while. We, we tried different things before we arrived on the Velcro. Uh, you could try tap dancing. And I don't mean like, you know, I can't tap dance. Uh, but I don't mean that, you know, I need Ben Veneer on right now. Uh, but I remember Jimmy White on our team. One of his triggers that he worked out with, because he was more of a physical guy, was he would, this, three taps. No, wait, one. I'm trying to remember how he did it. I'm trying to picture him right now. One, two, one, pause, one, two, and then four. So he had a specific beat. Didn't make much of a sound, although it sort of did. But that feeling was like, this is my time to focus. So is there something repetitive? You know, if you watch um, if you watch free, uh, really good free throw shooters, they go through the same routine every single time. I, I can still remember mine. Mine was two dribbles, pick the ball up, spin it. Two dribbles, pick it, spin it to where I wanted it, shoot. I mean, I to this day, you know, I would if I shoot a free throw, I would just subconsciously go through the exact same routine. I haven't shot a free throw in five years, but I guarantee you, if I picked it up and you watched me, w- without missing a beat, it would be two dribbles, pick it up, spin it once, two dribbles, pick it up and spin it to right where I want it and shoot like, it, like I was doing it with my eyes closed, right? So. That's one, you know, tap dance. It might be just something repetitive, right? You know, it could be, it could be snapping your fingers. I, you, you tell me if you snap your fingers a lot, that's not, it's probably too common. Uh, close your eyes. You know, I mentioned that, right? That's, a, that's an old tried and true method to enter focus land. It does not work for me, but some people, if they just close their eyes for 20 seconds, 20 seconds of nothingness, they close their eyes and, you know, it's so typical, but like, you know, they, may, they might do an, um, you know, they might do a sound. They might even, uh, one of my friends does this. I, I'm not joking. He just, uh, when it depends on what he's getting ready to do, but like if he needs to focus before doing creative work, say writing, you know, he, he has a mantra. I forget exactly what it is, but he just literally, he's like, the words are flowing to me and through me and onto the page. The words are flowing to me and through me and onto the page. So I'm messing that up a little bit, but he says it like five times and boom, he's in like la la land focused. The other thing about focus triggers is they're probably right in front of you. They're probably right in front of you. I used to do a lot of uh, classical music. You know, Baroque music would get me into the flow. Uh, that stopped working. I don't know why. But the, when it did, the simple act of pressing the button on what I used back then, which was iTunes, that was, I, was, I was good to go, right? Um, today, you know, if I need to focus and I'm getting right, like last night, I was at our kids' soccer in, indoors. It's noisy. There's so many distractions. So I had my earbuds, and I pulled it up on my phone because my earbuds don't connect to my uh, my uh, my Mac, or they do, um, but it just goes out. The Bluetooth is really weak on my Mac for some odd reason. I have no idea why. And um, so I pulled it up on my phone. I pulled up, pulled open that song by the XX. So I lied. I actually do play it in one other device and that's my phone when I'm working on my computer. But my point is I never play it unless I'm working on my computer. And I pulled it up on my phone and I mean, it was like, I started writing at like 512. I looked up, it was like 634. I finally had to pee. (laughs) I mean, I had no, like the whole world was shut out to me. My point is it's probably right in front of you. Like it's something right there. It's something on your desk. Don't go looking if it's right there in front of you. And then just practice, 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 and then move on if it doesn't work. Uh, whatever it is, you know, I, it took me years to find that song by the XX. And I've been on that song for f- three, four years now. Probably about three. Uh, the routine in college. I was a freshman when I started working with Pete. It wasn't until midway through my sophomore year, which ironically was right before I started, you know, really playing really well and was ranked very highly. Um, That's when I figured out my pre-shot routine. That's when I figured out the Velcro. So give it a fair trial if you're trying something, but if, you know, but if it ain't working, just move on to a new one. Try something different. You're, you're looking for something that might not, it doesn't necessarily have to be like the thing right away. Oh my gosh, I was in focus land, you know, the moment I did it. But like, okay, that that might be it. So try it for a few weeks. If it doesn't work, move on. So what is your focus trigger? You know, let me know. Do you guys have a focus trigger? Maybe, uh, maybe you tried one but didn't work. I'm just curious, do you guys have 
a focus trigger. Let me know. Let me know over there. And you know, if, if that's something that you're using, I'm curious who's using that. What about you, Alan? Do you have a focus trigger? Music. It's uh, I got a soundtrack of awesome and gets me in, you know, just state shift state. What's on and it? Then, uh, mm, songs that were probably before you were born that you knew, but uh, things like uh, 80s rock and roll, mostly 70s, 70s, 80s rock and roll. Right. Say 80s part. rock and roll good... before I'm born. What are you talking about? I know, I know. Well, before you, you got some Def Leppard on there by chance? No, I, I like a lot of angel, a lot of good good dolls. But even though that's not an 80s, 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 yeah. 80s, I know, I know. So uh, 2000, yeah. really. But uh, you know they but used I've to be got... a punk rock band. You know that's how they got Which, started. Yeah. 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 They, got a great they, story, they, great they put the one song on their name, which is still my favorite Goo Goo Doll song, mm -hmm. and they realize, oh wow, we can go from selling four thousand albums in Buffalo of punk rock to selling millions of albums of, you know, top forty, you know, acoustic driven stuff. We'll go that direction. <laughs> they, they 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 almost quit uh, quit. That was at the yeah. edge of them quitting. Yeah, he uh, John Resnick wrote that on his couch in Buffalo while basically looking for a job, and that one took off. So it was uh, it's pretty inspiring story for people who mm -hmm. want to persevere. I mean, it really yeah. is because they were ready to ready to throw in the towel, as according to what he told in a concert that we went to right before COVID. Nice. And so, but yeah, you know, we're going to see them. And uh, Angie's Angie's taking me, and I'm sure she's writing in the chat right now. It's popping cool. up. <laughs> so, yeah, that's my competition is John Resnick. So nice. That's awesome, yeah. dude. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, you got something that gets you in that, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. in that trigger. Um, and I would imagine just pressing, like again, now it's gotten to the point where the pressing of that button mm -hmm. is is the trigger, which is what you want. Um, mm -hmm. So that's awesome. Uh, good stuff there. All right. So now, and let's see the Rocky song. Um, G Gina says the Rocky song. Yeah, the uh, Eye of the Tiger. That's probably mm -hmm. a good one. That they played that at the beginning of the uh, the road the uh, the big uh, fort for fitness. They haven't had it in years because of COVID. But the big uh, they're doing they're doing it this year. So I'm going to do the half marathon again. Mm -hmm. uh, man, some, too many people are trying to talk me into doing the full marathon. But I'm like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> I want to, I want to go for time on the half. Like I want to, I want to set a record on the half, not, not go another half. Um, Sunfest in April. Nice. So, all right, cool. So now that you are focused, how do you stay focused? You know, you're in the zone. Mm -hmm. How do you stay there? And the first thing you need to do, keep your space as distraction free as possible. Like I am talking, go scorched earth on distractions whatever is distraction distracting you get rid of it uh janine says her focus trigger used to be the theme for chariots on a fire oh my gosh mm -hmm. -na 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 -na. Yep. <laughs> i can just see eric liddell going mm -hmm. yes yep. uh sorry speaking of distractions i just got distracted by distracted by janine's comment there um so whatever, hey, I'm going to just turn the chat off because whatever distractions, you know, whatever the distractions are, you need to get rid of them. That's okay to have distractions right now because this is what I'm doing. Uh, there's going to be times where you will want a distraction and there won't be one. So you'll just kind of have to find something productive to do. And after a few months, it gets easy. This is similar to trying to lose weight. If you tell me that Twinkies are your downfall and then that you eat two every night because they are so tempting, I have an easy fix for you. Stop buying them. <laughs> Stop buying the dadgum Twinkies. <laughs> Remove the it. temptation. I doubt that if every single night you were going to venture out into a cold, dark evening, start up the car and drive just to get your two Twinkies. You know how often I have ever been like mm -hmm. at 930 and I, gosh, you know what I really want right now is Dairy Queen. <laughs> I've thought that probably a hundred times in the last five years. You know how many mm -hmm. times I've actually gone to Dairy Queen once? One time I said, you know what, this will be one of this is like two, three years ago. I was like, you know, this would be a good opportunity just to surprise the kids. And I took them to freaking Dairy Queen one time. But if I said, you know what I really want right now is Dairy Queen. And then I had a pint of ice cream in the freezer. You know what I would do? Eat it. You ain't getting out of You're not going to get dressed or not get dressed. I mean, I'm going naked, but I'm saying, you know, you are not going to put on clothes, get in the car, open the garage door, pull out of the dress. I live seven minutes from the nearest place that sells junk food all right it's not that far but it's far enough that's 20 minutes by the time i wait in line. i'm not doing that for freaking ice cream or twinkies 
Too so good. you lose the desire and the desire for Twinkies is replaced by a desire to be thin. So again, food, ice cream, Twinkies, whatever, those are distractions from your goal. The same is true with anything. So here's mm -hmm. tip number one, close all the windows you aren't using. And I don't mean your physical windows. I mean, mm -hmm. on a computer, if you're using a computer, close all the windows. There's no such thing as multitasking. Multitasking is a myth. Okay, you technically do not multitask. You probably all heard this. You technically micro bounce back and forth between things and you're not able to focus on either one of them. I mean, I know I get distracted sometimes. I'll be listening to an audio book while doing something mundane like the dishes. All right. And our family, I'm the primary one that does the dishes just because it, I actually don't mind it. I actually kind of find it cathartic for some weird reason. There are many household chores that I don't do because I don't like doing them. But the dishes are the one thing where I just, I don't know what it is. It's like, it's mildly meditative and I'll be listening to an audio book and I'll be so focused on what I'm doing, washing a dish. Like how much brain power does it take to wash a dish? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what did that author say for the last 27 seconds? I have no idea. Back, back, listen. Oh yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have no idea. <laughs> um, so close all the windows that you aren't using. Secondly, keep those triggers handy. Mm -hmm. You know, what are some of your micro triggers? It, 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 it doesn't have to be like your focus trigger, although that could be, you know, okay, you, you're, you're distracted. I'm going to keep those triggers handy so I can stay focused. But if for me, that's why I picked the 10 hour version of mm -hmm. XX intro. Although in a pinch, if I can't access YouTube with the actual 10 hour one, I just go to Spotify and play it and I put it on loop. But the problem that I discovered is when you put it on loop on Spotify, there's the two the two seconds at the beginning of Dead Space and three seconds at the end of Dead Space, five seconds in a row versus on the YouTube thing, it actually literally sounds like the song just keeps going and going and going and going. You think five seconds, Matt, really? Are you? Yes, <laughs> I am that distractible that in five seconds I can be like, oh, what was I doing? Oh, yeah. Oh, I need to check Facebook. I need to be in that zone. So what are some of those micro triggers? I like for me, one of my micro triggers is this, this exact mug. I only do two things when I'm drinking out of this mug. Uh, I'm either live and right now I've got some uh, focus tea and some throat coat tea in there because I'm talking for like four hours today. But normally I just have the focus tea in there. And just the simple act of taking a sip of this mug and the taste that I get from it actually is a micro trigger. Um, certain pins, certain pins are focus trigger. I only use these pins. These pins right here. I've got, we're actually mailing some to team members. I've got a thousand of these pins. No, no exaggeration. They, they say no product, no problem. One of our courses on them. I only use these pins for two things, planning and uh, client calls, taking notes on client calls. I, I will not, I don't journal with these pens. I don't write notes around the house. I know this sounds weird. Like I'm like, whoa, Matt, you are way OCD. I'm not. It's just that I know I need to be focused. These are for two things. I, I don't know whatever it is. Like it, it could, I don't know. What are those micro triggers that you could have just readily available? Uh, we talked about this, but listening to focus music, you know, find something that works. Find something that works for you. I don't care what it is. You don't have to pick my song. You don't have to pick the Goo Goo Dolls. You don't have to pick, you know, anything. You don't have to pick Chariots of Fire. You you just, just pick something that works for you. So that's that's how you keep your focus. All right. Now, like I said, the biggest thing is just removing those distractions. You are not going to stay focused if you've got things popping up, you know, little things like turning off the toast on your, on your email. That's what the little pop-up is. If you have, if you have notifications enabled on your computer, I get it. If you work in an office and that's a culture, but could you find an hour a day where you can turn them off to focus on, on some deep work, just an hour and maybe talk to your boss about it. Like, Hey boss, from two to three every day, two to three thirty, whatever, can we do an experiment where I turn off all notifications and I work on one thing and then, oh my gosh, wow, you're the, the copy, you know, let's say you're a copywriter. The copies that you wrote is so much better, Jim. 
wow, Luke, your work is so much better. Uh, hey, so boss, can I do that from 10 to 11 every day and two to three? Yeah, well, heck yeah, you're getting results. Well, hey, look, oh my gosh, wow, we're doing even better. Hey, hey, boss, can I do that from 10 to 11.30 and maybe 1.30 to three? And you just keep expanding it. I get it if you're in a culture, but if you're an entrepreneur, turn off all notifications. I mean, I don't know who on my team is on this, uh, but I'm going to tell, uh, I'm going to tell my own team this, you know what? I want you to respond quickly to me because when I want something as the boss, I want it now naturally, but I'm a patient person. Not really, but I'll pretend to be patient and I can wait. Here's the deal. If I'm on a call with you and I'm like, here, let me slack that to you real quick. Boom. boom. I'm, I'm not expecting you to respond. I'm just like, I want, and I hear, I can't even do the sound. I don't even know the sound that it makes when you send a Slack message. Turn it off. You don't need to know that I slacked you right now. Slack is asynchronous communication. Email is asynchronous communication. I don't email you or Slack you with an expectation that you're going to respond in real time. If I want real time, I will Slack you and say, we need to jump on a 15 minute call so we can dialogue through things. I don't Slack or email in real time. I Slack an email asynchronously. I slack an email when it is convenient for me why? so that I can go focus on other things. So turn off all notifications, close every window, every app. Uh, I know for me, text message is only one person that can get through via text message when I'm in focus mode. And that's my wife. Um, she's not on the, I will tell her, Hey, I'm going into focus mode. And she knows like, okay, don't text Matt to say, what do you think about this shirt? you know, right now. And that's a few hours a day. I'm not doing that to my wife all day long, but she knows when I'm writing, I need 90 minutes where just, there's nothing. Now, during those 90 minutes, if she texts me and says, oh my gosh, Araceli left her homework at, you know, at the house. Is there any way you, okay, that's different. There's a level of urgency. Actually, no, I'm not bringing her homework. She left at home. She's going to have to pay the consequence, but um, the house is fire. yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> Get out. yeah, yeah, exactly. A phone call. Mm -hmm. Hey, I got a message from the alarm company. Our alarm's going off. Do you know why that is? Nope. I had my headphones in and I'm way away from the alarm. So I'm not going to hear it. Probably shouldn't have said that, but, um, <laughs> either way, the, the cops are on their way. <laughs> so, uh, Hey, can you go turn that off or go check and see if there's an intruder? All right. So the point is to stay focused right now. The reality is we're going to lose focus. Um, I'm, I'm in focus mode. I'm writing and 42 minutes in, I realize I'm cold. I'm cold. Huh? That's interesting. I'm kind of cold, oh, man. I'm going to need to go. Let me go over here. I've got a space heater in my office. Let me go over and bring that over. Okay. Where was I? All right. So how do I, you know, how do I do that? Right. You're going to have some distractions. You're going to have interruptions. Uh, Giovanni is going to come downstairs in the middle of focus time, even though there's a sign on the door. I don't put that sign up very often. Well, most of the time, I don't care if the kids come down. I could be right now. Our kids aren't here, but they could come down right now. I would not care. I mean, I love it. Come say hi. Most of our clients have met our kids on Zoom. Most of them have met them multiple times. Alan's met them. You know, mm -hmm. we've been talking. Alan Giovanni just wanders down here and like, wait, he wants to say hi. I think almost everybody on our team's met Giovanni. Almost everybody on our team's met my dog. You know, um, things are going to happen. Some are good, some are bad. Now you need to refocus. What do you do? I got an email from a, uh, somebody in our audience recently. It said, I, I'm just starting my business and I work by myself. Many of you can relate to that. Hey, Denise. Um, let's, let's, go, let's actually answer Denise's question real quick. I'm thinking and I can't think of a micro trigger, which means that I need to get or create one. Um, let's go back to that just real quick because I saw her question come in. You know, again, it's probably something you already use. It's probably something you already do. Uh, for me, you know, when I write, it's it's 95% of the time it's in the morning. I, I get up and write within 35, 40 minutes of, of waking up. My focus trigger is, is the start of that music. But I actually, the focus trigger, really, if you go back about seven or eight minutes, is right before I write. Uh, and I'm not writing right now. I'm not writing. I'm not, there's nothing I'm writing you know, other than emails right now. So I'm not doing that. But when I am writing, you know, books or whatever, uh, I do a quick workout. It's not like my full workout. I'm not like, oh, I'm, you know, trying to like lose weight or, you know, what. I'm just trying to get my body, you know, up, get my heart rate up, be awake more, 
uh, without all the stressors of caffeine. I do have my cup of coffee that I sip over the course of a few hours. And that cup of coffee, the actual taste and the feel of that coffee in that specific mug is like my micro trigger. It's I'm not joking. Like literally every sip that I take, I kind of snap back in a little bit. I get a little bit more focused. So I don't know what it is for you, Denise, but it's something that's there. Um, another, I'll tell you another easy one is superhero yeah. pose. Stand up and just get your body in the superhero state. Mm -hmm. Because when, when we shift down and we You're lean down, this, right? Yeah, no, hands to the side. Hands oh, to the side. hands to the side. Yeah, hands to the side, like you're standing yeah. up. It's hard to be hard to be weak in that state, or to feel weak. In yeah, that I mean, it could be that. It could be mm -hmm. anything. Like I said, it could just be little micro triggers. You know, it could mm -hmm. be taps, uh, a certain song. Um, it could be sometimes. Uh, it's like I have a friend of mine who actually is a writer, and he said when he hits, he said when I hit like a blank page. I close the app, you know, so he, he writes in Scrivener, I believe, uh, but whatever it is, it could be Word, it could be Google Docs. He closes it and then reopens it. And the reopening is the trigger. Hmm. And he's like, it works every time, you know, and you may have to do it like two or three times, but it works every time. So back to what this person said here real quick. I'm just starting out. I work by myself. I know many of you can relate. Sometimes I can go all day focused. Sometimes I can only, sometimes I can go, go only go. Okay. Sometimes I can only go for, for hours, but when I lose my focus, I am done for the day. I cannot get it back. Any suggestions? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Number one, tell yourself it's okay. Like this is normal no one is, you know, the best motivational speakers in the world, Zig Ziglar, Eric Thomas, Tony Robbins, all these super highly productive Elon Musk people. They are not totally motivated, pumped up and focused 24, seven, 365. It is impossible. I don't know what you're going through in life, but if there's something that, that is, that is causing this relationally or physically or emotionally, then take care of that. Maybe that's the thing. Like if you've lost a friend, take some time to mourn. I mean, a lot of us have to do that in the last couple of years. It'd be pretty hard pressed to find somebody who doesn't know someone who died in the last two years. Really truth is in any two year period, it's pretty hard pressed to find someone who doesn't know someone who's died, but someone that's close to you, you know, who died, take time to mourn. That's why you're, that's why you're not focused. You're in mourning. I don't want to help you get focused today. You need time. If you're sick, get your rest. You do not have to be on all the time. Consistency is not about going 100% every minute of the day. It's about managing your uptime and your downtime, not turning bad moments into bad days and bad days into bad weeks and bad weeks into bad months into bad years. Mm -hmm. Everybody has bad days. Steve Jobs had bad days. The president of the United States, all of them have had bad days. I mean, imagine that job. It's like, you know, Brian Regan, the comedian talks mm -hmm. about, he's like, imagine having a job where you just wake up every day and it's like problems, problems, more problems. You know, there's always going to be a city in the, in your, in your country, as big as this, there's always going to be a city where there's some sort of unrest or some sort of a problem. Some sort of a place is going to have a pipe break that causes a drinking water problem. And it somehow becomes the president of the United States's fault. I don't care what political party you're in. There's always going to be a war somewhere in the world, more than likely. And sadly, there's going to be something going on. There's going to be a natural disaster somewhere in the country. Imagine that's your job. Now try to have a bad day. Imagine, imagine having the flu and being president of the United States. That would suck. You know? Mm. So the point is tell yourself it's okay. Everybody has them. Do what you need to do to take care of the underlying problem. Maybe it's, uh, you know, relational stress. Maybe, I don't know. Because it could be a health issue. Take care of your health first. Screw being focused. Go, go take care of the health problem. I remember specifically, I had a, a Alan, you remember this, you know, about right at the beginning of COVID, actually. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I haven't shared this super publicly and I'll answer your question in a little bit, um, uh, Luke, but I, I was in so much pain. I had a, a thing called list launch challenge. We were doing it live 
Uh, if you're interested in growing your list, by the way, evergreen wise, just go to listlaunchchallenge.com and you can get the recordings. But I was doing it live mm -hmm. and I was in so much pain at one point um, that I had to, I was doing it like I was doing here, but I was sitting, mm -hmm. but it was hurting so bad. I had to lie down and thankfully I played like a five minute video. It was like a two, I was live like two hours a day. And about halfway through, I play a five minute video and I ran upstairs and went to the bathroom and then I came down and I took my monitor. I had three monitors. I took this monitor right here and I put it right here and tilted it all the way down so I could look. I was laying right here on the ground. I took this microphone. Um, I don't think I had this particular boom mic and I took, I took, uh, I had it over here. It's, uh, it's over by my bag now. I took the microphone stand. I put it by my um, like by my head and I had the monitor with my notes this way. I had the keyboard over here and I remember like trying to press, you know, the buttons and stuff to try to, you wouldn't have known cause I was just doing slides, but I was in so much pain that when I was done with that, I didn't try to get anything else done that day. Um, that lasted for weeks and then I went and got, you know, I got some stuff tested out and then they were saying the most likely cause was prostate cancer. Well, that's super fun mm -hmm. to find out. Yeah. I had a really hard time focusing for the next week and a half until I knew that it wasn't that because I'm thinking I might have freaking prostate cancer, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I had surgery and you know what? I couldn't focus for about 24 hours because I was still high. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I mean, I was loopy from the, from the anesthesia and the pain medication. Um, and then I was loopy for another three days because I couldn't sleep. And then finally I was better. And you know what? My focus magically came back after six weeks of being completely unfocused. Was it, was it the focus triggers? Was it the song that I was playing? Nope. It's because I wasn't in pain and I wasn't on pain medication. And I didn't think that I might die soon. So those things are normal. Work through those things, right? Uh, secondly, when you need a lift, get a lift. Man, I'm having a hard time focusing. Then go, go listen to some Goo Goo Dolls, Alan. There you go. go listen to whatever. I, Sometimes the food, I, I get distracted and you know what I need? I need to go outside. I need to go outside. I'm not superhuman. I just need to go outside, mm -hmm. go for a quick walk, see some sunlight, listen to a different song after an hour of the same song on repeat for two minutes. I just need a different song. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be a focus song. Well, two of my favorites, uh, actually probably my biggest favorite is proud Mary by Ike and Tina. <laughs> Talk about oh, yeah. old school. Mm -hmm. uh, That's old school. I've seen yeah. Tina. She's awesome. <laughs> I can Tina Turner. Uh, when it, it's you know when it talks about we're going we're going to start off nice and slow, but we don't do nothing nice and slow. We do it nice and hard. And the you know mm -hmm. it's that the beginning is just kind of like this. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like that, and then all of a sudden, da -na 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 -na, and it just goes, mm -hmm. and I'm like I'm an, I can't help it. I'm going to dance, mm -hmm. and the energy that I feel. Boom. I'm good. My heart rates up. I got kind of got some of that angst out. Maybe I might've been standing there for an hour and 20 minutes in a row writing and, you know, not, I'm barely moving. And all of a sudden I just got my heart rate up and, and moved a bunch in like a two minute period of time. Very few songs on earth will make me dance like a crazy person. Like that song. There's no that's, improper way to dance to Proud Mary, at least the Ike and Tina version. That, that's what our soundtrack awesome. I, I'll even do some Jackson 5, a little ABC, you mm. know, stuff like that. And um, I mean, because you can't feel bad when you're listening to those songs of your childhood. And yeah, and stuff. so it's really music's yeah. a bit music's a big, uh, big way to shift. It is. It so out. another one, movie clips. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, but the scene in uh, in Gladiator. When uh, when Commodus comes down and, and and asks him to remove his mask and he turns his back on him and turns around and says, my name is Maximus Decimus Meridius, commander of the armies of the north, you know, uh, servant of the, you know, the, the true emperor Marcus Aurelius. Like, you know, and he keeps going and he says, I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. And I'm like, oh, like I want to run through a brick wall. OK, what does that have to do with focus? Nothing. I just feel good. It's a dopamine hit. Mm -hmm. we talk about the dangers of social media and like dopamine hits and, and all those things. Yeah. Those are dangerous, right? We can't just be like, you know, we can't be like the, the, the rat that they use in the experiment that like, 
when he could click the button that would give him an orgasm or eat and he like some of them would just literally they would essentially orgasm themselves to death, right? Because of the dopamine, they would get so addicted to the dopamine, they would die because they wouldn't eat. Okay, we don't want to go to that extreme. But sometimes I need a little healthy dopamine hit, whether it be Ike, or, Ike and Tina, the scene from Gladiator, little Braveheart. You know, there's there's some other movie scenes that I'll watch. And I just I take three minutes to watch YouTube for Pete's sakes. Mm-hmm. And I get in a better place. And then I go back to my focus music. I go back to my trigger and I'm good to go. So if you need a lift, get a lift. If you need a break, get a break. If you need to go, uh, there, there's poems. Um, uh, what is it? Red Frost Motivation. Uh, Google Red Frost Motivation. And I mean, that's like their poetry, guys. If there's maybe there's a poem you need to read. Uh, I mean, some of their stuff, like some of the stuff by Rumi, uh, the one I was just listening to today uh, that I just love, the, the version he does of Rise Up. I mean, it's like chilling. Um, you know, Do Not Go Gentle Into That Good Night, Dylan Thomas, one of my favorites. Uh, if by Rudyard Kipling, you know, poetry, like just hearing poetry, reading poetry. What I don't know what it is, whatever it is for you, go go take a break. And, 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 and just take that break, right? Whatever works for you is what's be- is that whatever works for you is what is best for you. I don't have the answer for that one. Um, don't force it at first. You know, when you feel like if you feel like you're losing focus, I probably should have said this before I said the last thing. Stop. I've lost focus. Go for a walk. Go watch Gladiator. Go watch Braveheart. Call your spouse. Do anything other than sit and go, oh, I need to focus. I need to focus. I need to focus. That's like saying, I need to not eat that Twinkie. I need to not eat that Twinkie. <laughs> not Eventually, you're going to eat the Twinkie. <laughs> you know, um, this is not the time to go, well, I can't focus on writing. I'm going to go check my email. No. Oh, I'm going to go read the news. Oh, <laughs> that's a dumb idea. <laughs> no, just get away. For me, I'm on a computer. I work on a computer. Have you ever thought about that? Just as a side note, you're th- could you imagine as a child, I was going to literally my entire, the the sustenance, the way I feed my family was going to be through a, a screen. Pretty awesome, isn't it? It's weird to think about. It. If you really think about it, it's really weird. Awesome. This is what I do for a living. And there are no known deaths from working online either. That I'm aware of. Uh, has, I, yeah, there could be. I mean, you could argue there are, but. But I don't know. It's uh, definitely not as many deaths as like <laughs> high rise construction worker. That's um, right. Or or commuting <laughs> for that matter. You know, commuting. I mean, but the point is, that's what I do all day. So mm-hmm. checking the news. Bra- you know, again, I said, well, what about watching Braveheart and Gladiator? Okay. A little bit different. First of all, I usually watch them on my phone. I usually go upstairs, grab a drink or a snack while I'm doing it, you know. Um, things like that, but okay. Duly noted. That's why I said that's probably the rare of the two. Usually it's, I'll just go check the mail. Just go check the mail. Gets me outside, you know, and this, get a little bit of vitamin D on most days. Um, sometimes I'll just pick up the phone and call somebody and we don't talk about, I'm not going to, I'm not going to call like an affiliate or something like that. I'm going to call like, you know, somebody and talk about nothing for five minutes. I'll go upstairs and play with the kids. That's it's dog. usually fun. Go have a tickle fight with a dog. Yeah. I mean, if I get unfocused, that's one of the best ways to break it is just go upstairs and chase after him. So he's crazy. Get away from your normal environment. Environment. Refind your focus trigger. Okay. Um, all right. So it's been 45 minutes. You got unfocused. You go watch Gladiator. You go outside. You check the mail. You got to do. Re- you got to redo the focus trigger now. It's been 50 minutes. So. I turn the music off. That's the big thing. I've decided to stop. I turn the music off. What I don't want to do is come down the stairs and hear the music. I'm not ready to focus. I've still got to walk all the way over there. I'm not ready to focus till I get over there. Remember, it's it's kind of weird. It's like psychology, right? I don't rip the Velcro and then check my yardage in golf. I ripped the Velcro in a specific part of the pre-shot routine. So refine that focus trigger. Uh, one of the best things you can do on your little break is get hydrated, get fed, you know, whatever. Now, I'm I'm not a weight loss coach like Alan here, but if you're hungry, you're generally yeah. hungry. If you're healthy and you're hungry, might be a good time to eat a healthy snack. If you're hydrate thirsty, first, hydrate that? first, then hydrate first, then yeah. then then eat. 
If you're thirsty, yeah. drink. If you're not yeah. thirsty, drink anyway. That's right. Most people eat when they're thirsty. Water, mildly caffeinated drinks, uh, green tea. I learned, you know, I learned, I learned just recently why in this, this there's some in this, why green tea, uh, so much better. It's because green tea not only has the caffeine, but it has naturally occurring L, L theanine. I used, I used to use L theanine as a supplement, uh, mm. because it actually binds somehow it like binds the caffeine and makes the caffeine less takes away a lot of the negative effects of caffeine. Uh, and that's why the, t the green tea and caffeine is a completely different caffeine than black tea or coffee. Mm. Um, do not go get a Starbucks double mocha grande latte, blah, 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 blah. It's going to basically give you instant diabetes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> eat the gl low glycemic foods. Make sure you, you know, you eat and drink things that are, that are healthy. Uh, me, it's this with just a little bit of MCT oil. Cause that slows down the absorption of the caffeine. Um, makes it not like where I'm going to be like for a few minutes and then, uh, you know, it just keeps it going for hours and hours and hours at a low level. Make sure that you eat and drink away from your normal work environment. So, no, like I said, get up or walk away. I, I, I don't think that sitting there going, I'm going to sip this tea at my computer while checking my email is a good break. Nope, I'm going up. I'm going to do all of these. I'm going to get hydrated. Uh, Typically, you know, when I'm really, really focused, while I might sip a little bit of water, I don't drink a lot and I probably low level dehydration. So great. I'm going to go up and I'm going to drink like 20 ounces of water with, uh, I put a little bit of Himalayan, uh, pink Himalayan sea salt, splash of lemon juice and a splash of monk fruit to take the edge off the salt. Um, and I down that and I'm pretty hydrated, like very quickly. <laughs> mm -hmm. So little things like that, right. But do it away from your work environment. Um, when you walk away, review, make a list or review your list. So for mm -hmm. me, when I walk away, okay, great. I focus for an hour. I'm, I've lost focus. I need to regain it. So I need my little five minute break. I take my, my planner up and I just go through and go, okay, here are my three things for today. I've done this and this, um, or I'm halfway through this. Okay. And then I just say, okay, what are my next few steps? Mm -hmm. What are the next three things I need to do as soon as I walk in to accomplish this number two task? Uh, it's probably not checking your email. You know, it's probably not checking social media. What are they? And you come back and you do those. Uh, remember your purpose. Like I, I remind myself of my purpose. That's why I, uh, I'm not advocating for it. I do recommend it, but I'm not necessarily saying you need one, but I use the full focus planner from Michael Hyatt. Uh, if you go to mattmcwilliams.com forward slash toolbox, you'll see uh, an affiliate link there for the planners. Mm -hmm. I recommend trying it out. Because one of the things that it allows me to do is have my planner right there and constantly refer back to my goals. Mm -hmm. And so I like, I remind myself why I'm even in business. Why, why is finishing this chapter today important? Why, why is it? Well, because my book's launching January 10th, 2023. And according to my calcul, you know, my, my outline uh, my edits are due by March 7th. If I don't finish this chapter today, it means I got to do two chapters tomorrow, which is going to be really challenging, which means I'm not going to have the edits back in time. And it sets off a chain reaction. And, and so if you're working a job you don't particularly love, you find it hard to focus, you're daydreaming all the time. Uh, you know, remind yourself that, you know what? This pays for my food. It pays for my home. It pays for my kids going to school, whatever. Uh, you know, whatever it might be. If you're in a job that you love, and there are aspects that you don't like. I mean, there's aspects I don't enjoy. I've gotten it down to about an hour or two a week that I truly don't enjoy. But I don't enjoy analyzing data. I enjoy, however, analyzing the data and finding out, hey, we had a record month last month as we did. You know, I, I don't think anybody, Alan, you don't enjoy having to go into PayPal and send money to affiliate the active, but you sure enjoy the fact that you had to send affiliate. You sent me a message the other day. You just had, you, you just sent more money to one mm -hmm. partner than mm -hmm. you've ever sent anyone last month. That part's yeah. enjoyable. Yeah. You know? Just send some, just send some more of this right before getting on the call. Love it. Um, <laughs> so. Just a few other things real quick, guys, you know, obvious things might, might be clean your desk, you know, eliminate clutter, mm -hmm. um, vacuum, get things in order. Uh, one warning, and this ties in with the the seventh thing, which is to rearrange. Sometimes just a little bit of a change of environment mm -hmm. can, can can mix it up. Uh, you could put a new picture up, could move your desk a little bit. Uh, this sounds like the silliest thing, but if there are 
I found that the craziest little thing will help me. Uh, I'll move my monitors. This is actually good for your eyes too. Um, I'll just move them back two inches. They're just, mm -hmm. just enough farther away that it changes the perspective on everything. Mm -hmm. You know, if, I mean, it's like if I move here, it's just a little bit different for my eyes than right here. Um, mm -hmm. Little things like that. Um, I've got two keyboards that I switch between. They're almost exactly the same, but they feel just a little bit different. And I'm not joking. They're just enough different because the command key, it's the weirdest flipping thing. The command key and the option key are switched on the two keyboards. Mm -hmm. I use a Windows keyboard on a Mac uh, because I like the ergonomic keyboard. And that one little change is, you think it'd be a distraction but it actually helps me to focus because I have to think about where my thumb's going when I copy and paste. It's the weirdest thing. That little change, I'll just, re, I'll just change them up periodically for no other reason than it's just something different, right? Now, don't mm -hmm. spend, well, I can't really focus, so I'm going to do, do like a friend of mine does and like I've done before. I'm going to spend the next four hours rearranging my office. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. it's 15 minutes. It's like the Admiral, I think it's McRaven. Yeah. That make it, making the bed. Yeah, so you want to you want to change the world. Uh, here is that video too. Somebody wants yeah. to see it. You should, he does not suggest you should spend an hour making your bed. <laughs> five minutes. Five minutes yeah. to change the world. Yeah, he actually wrote a book on it. <laughs> making your bed. Yep. Oh right no, now. it's called Make Your Bed. Um, mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I have a uh, cool story about Admiral Craven, but I don't have time for that right now. Um, mm -hmm. When you're taking that break, set a deadline. Mm -hmm. So come back and say, okay, whatever part it is. So I'm going to finish, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm writing, uh, let's see, I'm planning our content for the month of, uh, you know, June. And I got through June 10th and it took me 45 minutes. When I come back, I've got an hour and five minutes. I'm setting a timer. Boom. I've got to do it. Like make a game out of it. And, and if I hit that hour and five minutes, then let's say it's, you know, that puts you at two o'clock and maybe you plan on working until five uh, and you know, you have about another two hours. Then mm -hmm. my reward is that from, two, you know, two to three or whatever the math is, I said there, I'm going to, I'm going to go goof off. And you think, well, could I have probably just spent two hours doing the content calendar? Sure. I could spend two hours doing it kind of halfway, or I could spend an hour and five, 10 minutes like lasered in all out and then have an hour to goof off. It's kind of like working out, you know, if I can spend an hour and 15 minutes and push my body to the point where I can barely walk, I do the same number of reps, probably lift the same amount of weight. We lost Matt. We just lost Matt. So he will be hopefully popping back on here. So for any of you guys put in the put in the chat, just uh, if you like, I'll do this and uh, let's see as he's headed back this way, his computer just decided to reboot. So you can text him some of these questions about uh, about focus. That's his that's Matt's text number to uh, so that you can reach him that actually goes to his phone. And, and a couple of things that Matt was was covering as well, I would kind of pick up in the in the middle of this is with uh, with what he's doing is setting a deadline it, that he was talking about that. But also keep keep a journal. When you get down, it's it's real. It, it's real. You know, after you've had real success, you know, you might have had relationship problems. You know, you aren't exercising or, or something like that. It's just bring in your emotional status back up by you know journaling too it, it helps and then and then really you know allowing yourself just some space because there's no there's no quick fix to any of this so anyway we got matt back there we go look at matt. all right I just, I just cared on i pretended to be you so so <laughs> can you hear yes we can hear you you can You're hear me okay okay i have, yeah, I have to join on my phone uh yeah i've never had that happen before my computer uh, I don't know if you saw my text message, Alan. Just decided to completely mm -hmm. reboot. Mm -hmm. that um, I have, I've never, ever had that happen before. Um, <laughs> how cool is that? You lost focus, and look at look how you came back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, 
Talk I'm about need you to tell me what's next on uh, what are our next world. things. I have I have no notes now. So what's well, what's, we're, oh, well I was talking about I was, working out, you know. Yeah, it, it's kind of the the, yeah. the same idea. Like, um, you know, you can you can really you could do the same thing in a shorter period of time, and then still have you know the forty five minutes to goof off. So it's totally mm-hmm. up to uh, up to you. You know how you do it, but basically, um, you know, I recommend setting a deadline. Is where I was going with yeah. that. What was what's next, Alan? What did I say? Keep, I have no idea. A, keeping a journal, keeping a journal. We oh, yeah, keep, keep a journal. A lo- you know, keep a uh, yeah. So I remember years ago, um, when so when I was in college, uh, we had a trainer named Matt Riley, and mm-hmm. I was trying to at that time actually, I was trying to gain about 10 pounds. Mm-hmm. Um, believe it or not, I was trying to gain about 10 pounds of muscle, and and I remember it's like, what do I do? And he's like, keep a journal. Write down everything you eat, everything you do, like how you felt. And, and he's like, what, you know, supplements you took, everything, right? And, and the objective was to identify, um, you know, okay, if I had, you know, three eggs and this for breakfast and my workout was bad, um, you know, and I, and I did this and, you know, that week I had this much protein or in fat and versus mm-hmm. this and here's what I gained and you know like how I did my workouts and just all these things right like how did I no matter what it was I kept a journal and I would go back and analyze it with him and the same is true like keep that journal about you know here's my focus trigger and what that did for me and uh and things like that but um see you Janine um you know just yeah keep a journal and and just document what you're doing there's my computer just randomly. Now it's restarting. That's the weirdest thing. I'm wondering if it's just going to log me into this on the other thing. We'll have to see. Uh, yeah. If it does, I'll just shut it. Now it's, it's going to have to be a minute. Um, so, yeah, keep a journal of, of your experiences. You know, looking back, like I, I do this with food now because um, I'm trying to figure out, like, you know, occasionally I'll have an upset stomach. And, like, okay, what is it? You know, what is it that causes – the, the upset stomach. And what I found is it's, you know, it's typically uh, for the longest time we thought it was wheat and it's, it's actually not really um, it's not wheat, you know, that does it. It's that, well, when I think about when do I personally, cause I don't eat really eat sandwiches and I don't eat buns. When do I eat wheat? I eat wheat uh, with pizza mm-hmm. and it's actually a uh, dairy. Because it's about the really? only time I really eat dairy either. What you what you measure is dairy. I'm not lactose intolerant. Yeah, I'm lactose sensitive, and so that? I wouldn't have known that if I didn't literally go back. Okay, okay, when when, well, what was this? And I was like, well, I didn't have an upset stomach then. I ate wheat then. Mm-hmm. I didn't have an upset stomach. Uh, oh, I had ice cream, and you know my stomach was upset. Oh, well, that's not wheat, you know. So I finally, kind of made the connection. So, yeah, keep a journal. Next one is how to handle distractions. Now you regain your focus. And you got to witness it, just finding a way. You got to witness it, didn't you? Sorry, I couldn't hear you, Alan. What was that? I was saying the next, the next one is how to handle distractions and how to regain your focus. Was Yeah. Um, which they just got to witness. You got to what? They just got to witness witness how you handle distraction. Oh, you found yeah. a way. You I mean, found a way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, how do you guys handle distractions? You know, how do you regain your focus? So, love to hear in the chat. I do want to address real quick Luke's question or Luke's comment there. I'm a solopreneur at the moment, so finding the balance between family and work is a daily exercise. I'm a single father with a day job. Going is a goal is to go full time entrepreneur. Uh, man, you're a hero, dude. I mean, like just like single other single dads and and single moms and uh, you know, any of that stuff, Um, you know, balance, balance is hard, you know, especially uh, like you said, you have a day job, you know, too, in addition to being a father. So uh, Luke, just keep at it. You know, your thing is to find those pockets of time where, Mm -hmm. you know, an hour or two here, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, you got to go all in with the focus. I I can get away with being distracted for an hour. Um, I can get away with going up. It's easier for me to say, like, I can go up and play with the dog for 45 minutes, you know, and just decide I'm not going to work for 45 minutes. Uh, the consequences for me are, are existent. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, that means I'm going to have to probably do something later, but I can get away with that. 
And just to be totally transparent, you can't. And so you've just got to kind of really be all in focused when you are, when you are focused. Um, shorter bursts, you know, my recommendation, a lot of people are like, oh, I just want to work at night. Uh, might want to put in 45 minutes in the morning. You know, that, that might be my recommendation there is, you know, put in 45 minutes in the morning um, and then put in some time at night. So you're not always giving your, your day job, you know, the, your best. Uh, Mark Sievercroft used to be on our team. Many of you remember him. I used to love, he would, uh, he would, he would tell me, he would text me at like, you know, noon, my time, which would be like 9 a.m. his time before he worked for us. And he would work on his business, his business in the morning. And then he would say, I'm going to my second job now. Most people would call it the other way around. Mm -hmm. And he would say, I'm going to my second job. And just that mindset shift of like, no, I'm going to put my best time, my best mind, my best brain power into my dream. And then I'm going to give my second job the rest of it, you know. Very good. Cool. You had some action items too, which talked yeah, about. Yeah, I don't know what they are. They um, Well, that's what I was going to pull so them up So number one would you. be find your focus trigger, right? There uh, you I go. Imagine. Find that trigger. Um, yeah. You know, I, I can't look at my, my notes now. Uh, and then being ruthless about removing distractions, which I love that. Yep. That's, that, that's a, that's a big one. That's, that's it. Uh, yeah. So make sure you find your focus trigger and secondly, do whatever Alan just said, because I can barely hear him. I don't know it's why not, it is, but on my phone, I never tried this on my phone before on my phone, the audio goes, I would have to go like this to hear you, Alan. Okay. Um, yeah. So there, if you guys wanted a real close up of my left yeah. ear, you had it. That's, so um, we know what it's here. I'd have to, <laughs> to do that. So awesome. <laughs> And we've got um, uh, no no live next week. No yeah, live no next live week. next week, guys. I'm doing a, a special training mm -hmm. for a friend of mine who works with authors, and I'm going to teach them how to uh, how to sell 10,000 copies without paid advertising or or any major media. So that'll be kind of fun um, sharing that, sharing what we've done to launch books for you know tons of people, and then my own book in uh, in 10 months. Here we're we're 10 months almost to the day, January 10th. 2023 you'll be hearing a lot of that date over the next uh, 10 months uh, we'll be launching turn your passions into profits so super excited about that um and um yeah let's see restart to complete and oh it so i guess when i clicked on try tonight with the installation of the new os it took that as 3 p.m eastern time oh wow wow yeah so the next live uh, is not how to steal your competitors' affiliates. We talked oh. about that last week, Alan. Excuse me. Sorry um, about that. So no live next week. And then two weeks from now, I'm going to be sharing something about uh, – I'm going to be sharing – I'm trying to remember now. Uh, oh, my top five affiliate promotion emails ever and why they worked. Um, I do remember that. So I'm going to actually walk you through my top five. So the best five affiliate emails that I have ever sent for affiliate promotions. And I'm just going to psychoanalyze them basically um, and tell you guys why, you know, why we use this word, why we use that word, things like that. Uh, you know, and walk you through all that. And of course, anytime guys, if you have any questions about this or anything that we've talked about today, uh, just text me anytime at 260-217-4619. Uh, I'll be the one to respond. Just feel free to text me anytime. And uh, sorry for the little glitch there, but I'm glad I was able to get back on within about a minute. Um, otherwise it's just like, well, I guess that was done. So you got focus I, back. How cool is that? Yeah. Like I said, I have no idea what you're saying. It's kind of funny. Um, <laughs> what? There's my right ear. So you got <laughs> all right guys. Well, we'll see you in two weeks. Uh, until then. Bye.